So you got a new PlayStation 5, but the internal storage just isn't enough. If you want a quick way, a good solution to upgrade the internal storage of your PlayStation 5, then you are probably familiar that a recent firmware update allows it so that we can actually upgrade our storage by picking up a NVMe solid state drive. And yes, I do have to give props to Microsoft. The simple slot GameCube style as memory card is actually really easy as it literally only takes two seconds to put it in. But a massive con about that one is that you are limited on its performance because you only have one option when that is that one by Seagate it was the collaboration with Microsoft, but it also costs a lot more. Or with a PlayStation, you have some awesome options. Crucial in my opinion is the most budget friendly version most bang for the buck. But this is an awesome solution. Only con is you have to provide your own external heatsink. So what other overkill option is there than this Samsung 980 Pro? It has a heatsink and everything all together so you don't have to fiddle with this. It's optimized for gaming performance. Now on the PlayStation website, when it comes to upgrading the to an M.2 SSD, the requirements is basically this. Storage capacity can be anywhere between the range of 250 gigs to four terabytes the minimum read speed cannot be no no less than 5500 so anything above you're good the samsung is rated at 7000 milliamps per second meanwhile crucials is 6600 keep this number in mind now the benefits with the samsung one is this 980 pro actually has the heat sink inside integrated all together in the complete package there's no need to buy a third party one crucial one you have to provide your own, which these could price anywhere between $10 to, I've seen some up to 30, but the ones that meet the requirements for PlayStation are within the $10 to $30 price tag. So this Samsung SD, it's available in one terabyte or two terabyte. Can get really pricey though. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the installation process, show you how easy it is and how you can transfer data from storage files to the new faster storage that we're gonna go ahead and add. Let's go ahead and get started. So first thing first, double check and make sure your PlayStation 5 is on the latest firmware update. You can simply do so by simply just going into, of course, the cog icon on your PlayStation, scroll down to system, software update, software updates and setting, up to date. There we go, we're up to date and we're good to go. From here, make sure you turn off the PlayStation to the full power off mode, not reserve mode or energy efficient mode or anything like that, just turn it off completely. And then of course, unplug the PlayStation and just place it down on a flat surface and let's go ahead and begin from here. All right, so this may be an unusual angle, but since our PlayStation 5 is on a stand, we are gonna have to be required to remove this to make our life easier, of course. <laughs> I can actually do this with my fingernail. I know you can do this with a penny too if you pick one up if you can't find a flathead, but I hope you have access to tools though because you are gonna need it for this system upgrade. Just gonna put this on side. So you wanna lay this down flat on its back. So we wanna make sure the PlayStation logo is facing down from us, like so. Now our rule is always to touch a piece of metal, some wood, something to relief and remove the static electricity that your body build up. So removing this faceplate is really easy. This part right here you want to pull this way and this part you want to pull up. So as we do this, it should fly off like that. Uh, I just applied too much pressure that it flew across the room. But we didn't break anything or anything like that, which is uh, positive. It's a good thing, I guess. Now, from here, what we need to get access to is this part. This is where basically the NVMe e is going to basically live. Just make sure to grab the tool that you need, which is a Phillips broom with a screw. And just lift off this cover. And just like that, we're golden. There's a slot right here where you can actually insert it. So once you remove the plate, you'll notice there's different numbers right here. These are for the different sizes of NVMe solid state drives that the PlayStation 5 supports. So you have 30, 42, 60, and 80. We need to remove the screw right here because this is what's going to be used to actually make sure everything stays in place so it doesn't move around when you're moving your console. But this little ring, we need to drop it into 80. Line it up with the 80. It just falls in place like so. And now we just gotta take our solid state drive, line up the pins, try not to apply too much pressure. It shouldn't require that much pressure as you're gonna break something. But once you have it in, simply just apply pressure, it's locked. 
and now notice how it lines up with the ring that we installed take our screw drop it in screw it in tight you have successfully installed a solid state drive to your PlayStation. At this point, you just gotta repeat the process. And if you notice the screw that we took out to remove that cover, it actually has the PlayStation logos on it. But from here, all we gotta do is just take our plate that we took out, line it up, screw it in. Not too tight, just enough that everything just fits tight. And then from here, just go ahead and repeat the process. So you simply slide it in. Just take some patience, but there you go. Nice click. Now everything is secure and tight. From here, make sure you attach this stand once more. If you had it on, plug in all the ports and power it on. It will indicate blue. And then from here on the display, you'll be greeted with this message. That's telling you that you need to format the M.2 SSD that we installed. So simply just format it because it's blank. Let it do its thing. Should only take a couple of seconds really. Yep, the following is true, and I'm kind of disappointed since we'll be close to 7,000, not 5,000, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and continue. Our M.2 SSD is done from here. Now, if you want to transfer data from the main system internal storage to the M.2 SSD, simply just go into your settings on the system, go down to storage, and here you'll find your console storage, and then you'll also see your M.2 SSD, and yes, it does utilize the full one terabyte storage, not that software mumbo jumbo. So I'll just simply go into your games, select the game you wanna transfer over, let's take advantage of this, select the game you like, select to move, you can actually move a bunch of other stuff at once too by simply check marking, and then just move, and since it is an M.2 SSD, it should take a couple of minutes. So just let it do its thing. And that's basically a quick rundown on how you transfer your data over from the internal console storage to the M.2 SSD. And there we have it. That is literally how easy it is to install an M.2 SSD on the PlayStation 5. Yes, we did went a little bit overkill by going with the Samsung 980 Pro, but I was honestly kind of disappointed when I saw the read speed at 5,000. This thing was advertised to be 7,000. I'm gonna go ahead and see how fast it is with this SSD because this is almost half the cost of the Samsung. Let's go ahead and quickly do that. All right, so here we are in the same menu. So let's just go ahead and format the M.2 SSD. Let it do its thing. No, I know I didn't have it heatsink installed. What the heck? It's faster. No freaking way. <laughs> okay, well, we learned something. So yeah. Uh, I wasn't expecting this. The process of making this video, we discovered something very interesting. Paying more doesn't always mean better. Now, this right now, the MSRP price for Samsung's 980 Pro is about $249. Meanwhile, P5 Plus can be found for $179. So that is a big price difference. And yes, you do have to buy the heatsink separately and I actually went ahead and ordered this one. So in grand total in its full retail price, it's under $190. That's $60 in price differences. And the most affordable alternative outperforms the most expensive. <laughs> so yeah, interesting. Uh, I guess we're gonna go ahead and stick with crucial. And this wasn't a part of the video. Originally I had no intention to do this, but I am trying to make informative video to help you guys. So, so I guess we're gonna go ahead and stick with crucial in our PS5. So it's gonna be our go-to in terms of building the PlayStation 5 Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and return this, I guess, because unfortunately it does not take advantage of the 7,000 megabytes per second read speed. As the P5 Plus, it's advertised to be able to go up to 6,600 megabytes per second. But for, based off the data that we gathered from our PlayStation 5, Critical seems to be able to outperform the Samsung one, which is shocking. But that's gonna be it for this video. I was shocked, hope you guys were too. Uh, links to everything will be in the video description down below. And so if you also wanna follow the PlayStation 5 build, where you can go ahead and find these stuff, everything will be in the description for you guys. So if you got some good useful information out of the video, I'd really appreciate if you casually leave this video a like, as it does help me out a lot, and get subscribed, especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos just like this, because I have an upcoming PlayStation 5 video coming out in the near future that you do not want to miss, especially if you're excited for this PlayStation 5 build pro series. But in the meantime, if you'd like to see more, check out this video over here as I go through my favorite hidden features, some tips and tricks about the PlayStation 5. And then that video over there, that's just a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.